Okay, in this video I'm going to work some examples using the quadratic formula for you. And if ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, then x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And so mainly we use this to solve quadratic equations that will not factor. In our first example, we have 4x squared plus 8x equals 3. And since this equation is not already set equal to 0, we need to subtract 3 from both sides, making it 4x squared plus 8x minus 3 equals 0. And so from that, we get that a is 4, b is 8, and c is negative 3. So we're going to plug those values into the quadratic formula. It's negative b, but our b is a positive 8. So the opposite of that would be negative 8, plus or minus, big square root, b squared for us that's going to be 8 squared minus 4 times 4 which is a and then times negative 3 which is our c and this is all over 2a so for us here that's going to be 2 times 4. So look at that, that gets all the numbers in the right places from here on out. It's just simplifying that formula. So the negative 8 stays negative 8 for now. And then plus or minus, sorry about that extra window, um, 8 squared is 64. And then you've got negative 4 times 4 times negative 3. So notice that those two negatives there are going to change to a plus. That's a common mistake. People forget to change that. And then 4 times 4 times negative 3 is going to be 48. And then on the bottom, 2 times 4 is 8. All right, so then underneath the radical, we're just going to combine our like terms underneath there. So that's going to be 112 now. Whoops, got a stray line in there. 112, and this is all over 8. Now, right here, we are going to have to simplify this square root because we can't leave it the square root of 112. It needs to be in reduced um, radical form. And go over here and make your little factor tree. But the best way to break down 112 is to notice that that's 7 times 16, which would make that four on the square root of seven. Okay, so over here, negative eight, let's replace that 112 with four on the square root of seven, and that's all over eight. But we're still not done yet, we're almost done. But we notice that these three numbers here can all be reduced by the same factor. In fact, they can all be reduced by a 4. So that makes this now negative 2 plus or minus. There's an understood 1 there, but you don't have to write it. The square root of 7 all over 2. And this is actually your final answer. If all three of these numbers here can be reduced by the same factor, then you need to reduce it. Um, if that, say that 4 would have been a 5, then we would have stopped right there and not done anything else to it. And you might be tempted to cross out these, the negative 2 and 2, and make that a 1, but you can't do that either because, again, you don't have anything to simplify in front of the square root of 7. Now, this as far as you can go, unless it's wanting you to give an approximate answer, this would actually be called an exact answer. 
and a few of the problems will want you to go a little bit further and get a decimal representation and when that's what they want they call that an approximate answer and you basically have to put that in the calculator to get a decimal representation so the way I would put it in I want my entire numerator in parentheses I'm going to open a parenthesis I'm going to put negative 2 and I'm going to do it the first time with the plus and then I'm going to do second square root and I didn't mean to have that extra square in there so I'm going to delete that inside of the square root I want a 7 and I'm going to arrow out of that I'm going to close my parenthesis and then divide by 2 alright so my first approximate answer will just round to three decimal places um, point three two three and then to get the other one I'm gonna have to do that same thing with the subtraction symbol but I don't have to retype that whole thing I can just press second enter and it brings up the last thing I typed in and I can scroll back and just change that plus to a minus and press enter and it'll give me the other answer again we'll round to three decimal places negative two point three two three so there would be my two approximate answers now again every problem doesn't ask you for that so I always read the directions so you'll know I'm sorry about the stray window that keeps popping up I've actually tried recording this a couple times and can't seem to get rid of it so our next example x squared minus 4x plus 6 it's already set equal to 0 and in this one a is 1 b is negative 4 and c is 6 alright so to plug into the formula that's going to be a positive 4 this time because remember you're taking the opposite of that so positive 4 and then inside here you're going to have negative 4 squared for b squared minus 4ac that's 4 times 1 times 6 in this problem and underneath 2a is 2 times 1 so to simplify we've got 4 plus or minus negative 4 squared is going to be a positive 16 and then that's going to stay a minus this time. 4 times 1 times 6 is 24. And this is all over 2. So now if you subtract what is underneath that radical, you might notice you've got a negative number coming up. So that's going to be negative 8 all over 2. And here again, you've got a radical that needs to be broken down. This one's pretty simple because it's just 8. So that's going to be 2 on the square root of 2. But since it is negative, we need to say that that's 2i on the square root of 2. Okay. And at the end, again, you need to simplify. You notice that this 4, this 2, and the other 2 can all be simplified by a factor of 2 so that becomes 2 plus or minus i on the square root of 2 and this is actually your final answer um, it's technically all over 1 but you don't have to put that since that is understood and we're not going to worry about approximate answers on this one because it would just be the decimal version of that square root of 2 and on web assign, you would need to put that once with the plus and once with the minus.
All right, the other thing I want to bring to your attention is the discriminant. The part of the quadratic formula that's underneath the square root, the b squared minus 4ac, it gets its own special name called the discriminant. And if you compute that and it's greater than zero, then you have two real roots. If it equals zero, you have one real root. And if it's less than zero, you have two complex roots. And when you're asked to describe the roots of an equation, such as what we have here, we've got 3x squared minus 4x plus 5 equals 0, you don't have to work through the whole quadratic formula. You just work through the discriminant part. So in this one, a is 3, b is negative 4, and c is 5. And that's just going to be negative 4 squared minus 4 times 3 times 5. All right, negative 4 squared is 16, and 4 times 3 times 5 is 60. So once you subtract that, you get negative 44. I can get my 4s here, and then since that is a negative number, then you would say that what you have here is two complex roots. And sometimes that could also be called um, two imaginary roots. But that's how you do your discriminant problems.